Okay, I want to show you an important notation that we're going to use throughout the course. So let me start with a simple example. If you see one of these things, it's a Greek letter sigma, and usually you'll see it surrounded by things like this, i equals 5 on the bottom, maybe 9 on the top, and then something like, I don't know, i cubed here. And what this means is that i is a counter, or a lot of people call it an index. And this counter starts at 5. And it ends at 9. So you, you count 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that means that the first term, you plug in i equals 5, so it's 5 cubed. And then you increase, you count up to 6, so the next term is 6 cubed, and you add it. The next term would be 7 cubed, and you add it. Then you add the next term, 8 cubed. And then the last term is 9 cubed, and you stop because of the 9 on the top of the sigma. Okay, so now let me give you the general definition of what is the sigma notation. Well, you write sigma like this, and i equals 1 on the bottom, let's say some number n on the top, and then some general expression xi, something in terms of i. And it just represents the sum x1 plus x2 plus x3, and you add everything up until you get to xn. So this is the general definition of what sigma notation is. Okay, let me give you another example. Let's say I asked you to evaluate the following sigma, the sum from, say, k equals 0 to 8 of 3 to the power k. Okay, and I can use the letter k as my indexing variable or my counter. You can use any letter you want. So let's do a solution. So one way you could do it, let's call this thing s, and this here's an inefficient way to do it. You could just start plugging in the numbers, right? So it starts at 0, so 3 to the 0. Then the next term would be 3 to the 1. And I'm just counting up 3 to the 2, 3 to the 3. And I would just keep going until I get to 3 to the 8. So I don't want to evaluate all these exponentials and then add them up. That might take me too long, especially if I don't have a calculator. So there's an algebraic trick you can use here. It's a little bit of a trick. Let's try multiplying this whole expression by 3. So 3s. Well, then I have to multiply each of these terms by 3. So the first term, 3 times 3 to the, three times three to the 0 is 3 to the 1. 3 times 3 to the 1 is 3 to the 2. 3 times 3 to the 2 is 3 to the 3. 3 times 3 to the 4, sorry, 3 times 3 to the 3 is 3 to the 4, and so on. And then when I get to the last term, it's 3 times 3 to the 8, which is 3 to the 9. And you might notice a little pattern here is that all these terms match up. The first sum has 3 to the 1 in it, and the second term also has 3 to the 1 in it. Both sums have 3 to the 2, both sums have 3 to the 3, both sums have 3 to the 4. In the top one, there's a hidden 3 to the 4 there. And the last one has a 3 to the 8 hidden as well. The only terms that aren't matched up are this 3 to the 0 and this 3 to the 9. So if I did something like take 3s minus s, all the terms there would cancel. 3 to the 1 would cancel, 3 to the 2 would cancel, 3 to the 3 would cancel, 3 to the 4, they would all cancel except for the 3 to the 0 and the 3 to the 9. So what I'm left with is 3 to the 9 minus 3 to the 0. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit. Obviously, 3s minus s is just 2s. And I have 3 to the 9 minus 3 to the 0, which is just 1. And now I can solve for s just by dividing by 2. So s is 3 to the 9 minus 1 divided by 2. So that's nice. That's a lot easier than just plugging and chugging doing a little bit of an algebraic trick there. So this is a part of a general formula called the geometric sum formula. And what a geometric sum is, is you start off with some number a, and then you multiply a to get the next term, a, r. Then you multiply, so you multiply a by some number r. Then you multiply that by r again, so a, r squared. And you multiply that by r again, a r cubed, and so on. You keep going up until you get to a r to the n. So I can write this in sigma form. So sigma and the counter starts with, um, let's say, k equals 0, and it goes up until n of a r to the power k. So this is called a geometric sum. This a here is called the initial term, because it's, well, it's, it's the first one. And this value r 
is called the common ratio because it's the number that we multiply by to get the next term. So there's a formula, a general formula for this that you can use the same trick that we did up here for this last example to derive this formula. This geometric sum is equal to the following expression. You take the initial term a and you multiply by the common ratio to the power n plus 1 minus 1 and then you divide by r minus 1. Okay, so this is the geometric sum formula, and we're going to use this a lot throughout this course, especially when we're talking about compounding interest. So let me give you one last example about how you use this geometric sum formula. So my last example, let's say I want to evaluate something crazy, like the sum from k equals 7 up to 17 of, say, 2 times 5 to the power k. Okay, so the thing is, um, I want to use the geometric sum formula, right? Because I can write this out as 2 times 5 to the 7 plus 2 times 5 to the 8 plus 2 times 5 to the 9 up until 2 times 5 to the 17. I want to use the geometric sum formula to evaluate this, but the thing is, it starts off with k equals 7, whereas the geometric sum formula starts with k equals 0. So I have a little bit of a problem. I have to shift the index so that I have to shift the counter down so that I can match the geometric sum formula. So this is a little trick that you have to get used to. So shift down. So what I do is I sub in a new variable, let's say j, as k minus 7. So I just take k and I shift it down by 7 units. That means that since k ranges from 7 to 17, then j would range from 0 to 10, right? So I can write this whole new sigma in terms of j now. So j, like you said, ranges from 0 to 10. And uh, the term stays the same, 2 times 5 to the k. But you see k is, um, since j is k minus 7, k is j plus 7. So I can write j plus 7 here. <coughs> okay, now let's simplify this a little bit. I can write this as the sum of j equals 0 to 10 times 2 times 5 to the power 7 times 5 to the power j. Okay, now this is looking a lot more like a geometric sum because now it starts at j equals 0, goes up to some n, I have this value 2 times 5 to the 7, that's my a, and 5 to the j, well 5 is my common ratio, that's my r. So great, this matches exactly a geometric sum. So now let's apply the geometric sum formula here. So I take my initial term a, so 2 times 5 to the 7, and then I multiply by the common ratio 5 to the power n plus 1 minus 1, and I divide all that by r minus 1, so in this case 5 minus 1. Okay, and now you can simplify this if you want. You can plug this into your calculator and you'll get the result of this geometric sum.